Okay, it's time for another repair on the Harbor Freight Trencher. Um, actually, shortly after uh, I did my previous repair, uh, I actually had a problem with the cylinder. I, I was actually inchworming or crab walk, whatever you want to call it. I was moving it across the yard and it just stopped in place. And the, boot, the uh, arm, now I'm not sure everyone seems to use different terminology. I consider this the boom, this the arm, and this the bucket. The arm piston, this one in the center, just stopped moving. Now, my first impression, or my first thought, was that maybe I had a problem with the control valve because it had just stopped with no sign of it, any other problem. Uh, so what I did to troubleshoot that is I came under here, and you'll notice there's, of course, one controller for each one of the valve or one of the uh, pistons on the inch, on the machine. And what I did was uh, swapped hoses so that another con another valve was controlling the arm piston and I still got no motion at all. And what I did get actually, after a couple of minutes of messing with it, was a big spritz of hydraulic fluid out of the top of the uh, piston here. And if you look on the end here, part of the seal or part of the internal components are, have popped out of the end of the cylinder. So, first of all, I know that the cylinders can be rebuilt. I have not. A, I don't have a problem doing that. Uh, I'm going to order some parts and rebuild this one later on. I'll talk about that later. But for right now, for the sake of time and because of the age of the machine, I decided that I would go ahead and purchase a new cylinder. So I ordered a new cylinder. I ordered a new supply hose to get to the cylinder. Not because it's really necessary, just because while I'm replacing that, I, I would just as soon uh, replace the hose as well. So I'm going to replace that and the piston today. Uh, and see if we can get this thing back in operation uh, because I need it pretty bad right now. Another thing I will be doing while I'm working on the trencher is I'm going to go ahead and change the hydraulic fluid uh, and I'm going to change the hydraulic filter. Now I know there are uh, other filters available on the market, probably less expensive. Uh, I'm not sure. I can talk about the prices of these parts later. But I went ahead and I ordered uh, the factory filter for the hydraulic system from Harbor Freight. So I ordered those parts on a Saturday, and you have to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for Harbor Freight parts, you actually have to phone in the order. You can't do it online. Well, you can go to the site and you can find your part, and I can put some information in the, in the notes below about that process in case you're a little confused or you've never done it before. Pretty straightforward, but I ordered these parts on a Saturday, and they actually arrived the next Saturday, which I cannot complain. That was pretty good for compared to a lot of stuff I have to order, even at work, things I have to order. So let's look at what I ordered. Now here's the new piston. It's a bright color. Uh, looks brand new, doesn't it? And I've got my filter and I have my hose. Now also I have some hydraulic fluid. I paid probably a little more than I needed to for the hydraulic fluid. Uh, the uh, machine takes three and a half gallons. I bought four gallons of this mystic, uh, mystic. Uh, ISO 68. This was recommended uh, by my brother who works on hydraulic systems. Uh, so even though it's a little pricier, I felt pretty comfortable with it. And hopefully it's got the viscosity I need for this thing to run smoothly. And that's the stuff. And that ram anyway, so if it's draining, hey, a little oil never hurt anything. But we're kind of lubricating the whole frame today it looks like, but here it comes. You know, if there's any lesson to be learned here, which I don't have any experience doing this, I was just sharing my experience right now. Uh, if I had this to do over, probably what I would do is detach the cable at the other end so I could drop it in the bucket, as opposed to having it run all over the place like I'm doing right now or dribble all over the place. That would have been a better plan. Uh, the uh, lower hose, I should have disconnected that down here at the valve assembly so I could stick it in a bucket and I wouldn't have such a mess here. But Hindsight's 2020. Now, as is so often the case on heavy equipment, this uh, piston is actually pretty heavy. Uh, I didn't weigh it, but uh, it takes some effort to pick it up. So you want to be careful removing this, not drop it on your foot or hurt your back or anything or twist yourself funny. That's why I hesitated when I got to the last pin, the only thing holding it up here, and uh, I'll be taking it off now.
I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how in the hell is he gonna get that thing up to here, the piston extended? Well, keep in mind, it's a hydraulic cylinder. Once I have it all hooked up, that's the last part I'll put in the final pin. I'm gonna extend it with the hydraulics once I get the hoses on and the, of course the fluid changed. So for right now, it's gonna rest right here and I'm gonna work on getting the hoses back installed, including the new hose. Now, if you haven't worked on hydraulics before, and I honestly haven't, not inside of, not with a uh, piece of equipment like this, I do some hydraulics pneumatics at work. But you'll notice that the new hose comes with a plug on the end. Well, actually on both ends. And there's a good reason for that. And uh, I mean, it seems obvious, but I just want to mention it. Any of these hoses, now one of these hoses I'm replacing it, I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, but anytime you're working on a hydraulic system, you want to make sure the ends of your hoses are not touching the ground or, or getting dirt or grit in it, because that's going to be your worst enemy or one of your worst enemies in the hydraulic system is grit and grunge. So uh, you really want to keep these things from touching the ground. And that's what I intend to do. Also, you'll notice in the new piston where the new fittings go in, there are also plugs in there from the factory. And that's to keep dust and grime out so you won't have problems with the cylinder, hopefully. So I uh, just wanted to show you that. Kind of felt like this was going to happen. Um, this is on the old cylinder. Uh, this is the fitting, and it is a, a male fitting uh, at both ends. And I got the pipe wrench on it. The other one came out with a little trouble. This one just put up a fight. And I know I can get it out later, but I've already done some damage to the shaft. I don't know if you can see it in this picture. It's flattened on one side where I kind of torqued it down pretty hard with the pipe wrench. So I'm headed off to Home Depot to get another fitting. It's a standard pipe fitting. I'm not sure exactly what size it is. I'm just going to carry one with me down there and swap it out. Uh, and once I get that, I should be able to put it. As it so often happens in the real world, uh, I've had to stop short of completing the job today. Uh, and this is the real world. Had an issue getting a compatible fitting for the one I damaged, uh, trying to remove it from the old cylinder. And I found out, I think, a little bit about why it was stuck in the cylinder the way it was. Uh, and I still haven't gotten it out. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll update you in the next video. But it's Sunday evening. I just got this far. Uh, the piston's in. The hose is ready to go. I may drain the uh, hydraulic fluid tonight and change that. But I, I think I'm going to wait until I finish with the cylinder replacement, uh, getting the hoses on there. I've got some great leads about where I can get what I need to have to fix this thing. And I'm going to follow up on those tomorrow. But in other words, this is, I guess this is the end of part one to be continued.